Greetings, Earthlings. I'm back with a review of a travel microphone from Blue. So today we're looking at this guy, the Blue Raspberry. And if you do want to pick this guy up, it will set you back around 200 bucks. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, the mic's gain is set at around 50%. The computer's input gain is set at around 50%. I'm not doing any post-processing, but I will boost it in post to make it listenable. So check the doobly-doo to see what I did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. You're gonna get the microphone, which has a pre-installed desk mount. You get a 5 8 or 3 8 inch female to quarter inch male stand adapter to connect to a standard microphone stand. You're gonna get a standard USB cable. You get a lightning cable to use this with your iOS device. You get a storage bag and you get some documentation. As far as the build quality, it definitely doesn't feel terrible, but I was expecting something a little bit better for 200 bucks. And what I mean by that is the side and the knobs of this thing are plastic and they feel kind of cheap. The grill and stand on the other hand are metal and then there's this leather pleather coating thing which looks pretty nice. On the front you're going to find an LED light which will let you know if you're getting a signal or if you're clipping. On the left hand side you're going to find a headphone volume control. On the right hand side you're going to find the microphone gain control and you can actually click this button to mute or unmute the microphone. And then on the back you have a three and a half millimeter headphone jack which does offer latency free monitoring as well as offers playback from your computer. And then directly beneath that you'll find the USB connection port to connect it to your device. As far as the specs, this thing has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a gain range of 0 to 40 decibels, a max SPL of 120 dB, a bit depth of 16 or 24 bit, and a sampling rate of 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. Now I'm spinning around the microphone to determine what the actual polar pattern is, what the off-axis coloration is, what the rear rejection is, and how everything sounds as we move around the microphone's capsule. Now I'm typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. Now I'm right on top of the microphone with the Stedman Pro Screen 101 to see what kind of proximity effect we can get. Now I'm about three inches away with the pop filter, about one foot away from the mic, about two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Okay, now I have the Raspberry connected directly to a Windows 10 PC. The input gain is set at plus six decibels. I did not change the gain on the microphone, and this is how the audio is sounding. Okay, so now I have the mic connected directly to my iPhone 10, and I am recording it into the Sure Motive video app. I'm sorry, Blue. I'm sorry, Sure, but this app is the only one that I was able to find that records raw audio, and this is how the microphone sounds in this situation. I'm running out of mics that I can buy and test I don't know what I'm doing, do you know what I should do next? Well, I don't really have any one-line descriptors of this microphone, so let's just get into the pros and cons. So first off, in terms of pros, it is compatible with Mac, Windows, and iOS, which just makes it insanely useful, and it's extremely small and portable. But then in terms of cons, this thing is just terrible when it comes to shocks because the provided desktop stand offers no shock absorption. And when you throw this on a boom arm or a regular mic stand, you're also getting no shock absorption. This thing also did a pretty bad job when it came to handling plosives. So you will have to be fully aware of your microphone technique to help avoid that, or you'll have to throw a pop filter into your travel kit. I also would have liked to see some metal dials on this thing to add some durability to it because it is marketed as a travel microphone. And also I don't like the fact that there aren't any markings on the dials to indicate what level you're setting them at. 
So now my overall thoughts on the microphone. On the electric guitar, I thought it sounded pretty good, but it did tend to get a little bit muddy in the lower frequencies due to the extended low frequency and having no roll off down there. That's easily resolved by pulling the microphone back a little bit from your amp or throwing in a high pass filter in post. I thought the acoustic guitar just sounded great all around. It had a really nice body and a good amount of shimmer in the higher frequencies. And then on spoken word and singing, this thing is just really bright. So when it comes to recommending it, I know I've been saying this more and more recently, but I'm just gonna have to say maybe. And the reason I say that is the iOS microphone market is pretty limited right now. So if you're looking for a really tiny portable microphone, before you decide on this, go check out what else is being offered in the iOS microphone market. And then if you still like the tone and the features being offered in this, then consider picking it up. Now who I think this is made for are iOS users who do a lot of travel, need a really small form factor microphone, and need to record their music demos or need to record podcasts on their iPhone or iPad on the road. But on the other hand, if you're a laptop or desktop user, I think you can get a lot better bang for your buck out of just a standard USB microphone, so I'd suggest you go look there. All right, guys, that's it for today. If you liked it, thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. If you want to vote for gear that you want me to review, go to geeksrising.com slash podcast and cast a vote there. If you want more videos, subscribe by clicking the logo beneath me. Check out the Discord server, link in the description, and I will see you all later. Thanks for watching. Bye.